Seamus told me. I'm not sure if this is true or not, but this park is meant to be the most heavily surveyed park in Western Europe. There's small things in the park that tell you things about the two communities who use it. It's one of the few areas where conflict was put aside and in working class areas it gave young people something to do, has kept them away from getting involved in the fight. Seamus told me, this maybe has nothing to do with your question, but from all the years of people talking about how you solve the conflict here, the answer as far as I see is money. To me, it's about how democracy works. It works above a certain income level. If you earn a certain amount, you've got access to this idea of democracy. There's still a lot of things to sort out in terms of conflict and paramilitarism and it's a very slow process and it's a very complicated process because a lot of these things are tied up in terms of different economic groups. 70% of Belfast city center is privately owned and probably by a very small number of people. The thing I don't like about it mostly is they are public spaces and we're being denied access to them. Your movements are being further and further restricted and the gentrification process is about that, protecting property. Skype was invented in Tallinn. It is the possibility to call free through a computer system. It is quite popular around the world. For me, it is one of the little success stories we have. It is a brain-focused company. It is more decentralized than, for example, the Deutsche Bank, so it is really a contemporary structure compared to a modern structure. They sell computers with the sign of Skype in China. They get best profits from this sector. Stanisław told me, you should visit and film the Granary Islands which is a ruin in the city center, 61 years after the war, destroyed by Soviets in The next day I visited the Stutthof National Museum. I read in the guide of the museum the Stutthof concentration camp lies 34 kilometers outside Gdansk. It was the first Nazi camp built outside of Germany and was the last camp liberated by Allied forces. Guessing with Cyclone B has begun in June 1944. Camp doctors also killed sick or injured prisoners in the infirmary with lethal injections. The evacuation of prisoners from the Stutthof camp system in northern Poland began in January 1945. When the final evacuation began, there were nearly 50,000 prisoners, the overwhelming majority of them Jews, in the Stutthof camp system. It has been estimated that over 25,000 prisoners, one in two, died during the evacuation from Stutthof and its subcamps. The Soviet forces liberated Stutthof on May 9, 1945, and liberated about 100 prisoners who had managed to hide during the final evacuation of the camp.
I read in the guide of the Museum Tuthoff a quote by former inmate Hanna Lewis. Initially, it seemed that Stutthof would be a better place than Auschwitz. We had room enough to stretch out at night, although there were no bunks and very few blankets. Used to omnipresent SS guards, we were surprised that here they only showed themselves during roll calls. We were more or less left to ourselves, in horrifying sanitary conditions and unaware of our future fate. We sat or lay waiting for who knew what, ever more depressed. We survived Auschwitz and now we're doomed to die here, lost and forgotten, utterly neglected. In the sleeping wagon in the train from Vienna to Gdańsk, I was traveling with a passenger who told me he had relatives who escaped from Stutthof. He asked me why I was interested in this part of history. Without waiting for any answer, he told me that not only Jews were killed, Jews would think that they are the only victims of the world, Though I tried to make clear that I am not interested in listening to him, he continued talking about the great fights of the Polish army in the last centuries. It was late in the evening and I listened to the monotonous sounds of the railway.